one we know, everybody. I'm out here at pen six. We have seven total pens, and the pens with cattle in them now are one, two, four, and seven. We had some in pen five, and we shipped those out this morning. But pen two and pen three, pen two specifically, is for our weaning cattle. So when we buy little balling calves, they haven't been given any sort of real feed other than hay and grass. We stick them there so we can keep them close to the barn in case we have to doctor them, but it gets their room in and all of their stomach used to the feed. So we're going to take pen two, and tomorrow morning we're moving over here to pen six. But before we can do that, I'm going to go and fix a few things on this fence, and I'm going to take you guys along with me. So one thing that is different to me uh, from my days of hauling cattle and my days on the ranch is that feedlots usually used continuous fencing, continuous steel fencing. Well, a lot of these smaller yards are using barbed wire and they're hooking it up to an electric fencer. And surprisingly enough, it works pretty good. I wouldn't have thought that, but it does. The problem we have though, and I'll flip you around and I'll show you, the problem that we have is that the cattle, they like to dig here at the edges. And then of course, when you drag pens and clean everything up, smooth everything out, you lose, you lose some dirt. When you lose some dirt, you get down to the bottom of the fence post here and you can see that that guy had rotted off. So as you can see, it rotted off. And since it had rotted off, if we're on the ranch, we would have put a new fence post in and we would have made it work. But here in this application, we can't really keep on doing that unless we pull the old post out of the ground. And where it's broke off right at the ground, that's a little bit difficult. So you can either chip it out and try to dig it out that way, dig around it, it makes it just a mess. We do got forks. Uh, little clamp forks that'll hook onto it like log forks and that doesn't always work the best either so what we have found is that we can drive a t-post in there either right beside it or right behind it beside it works better we take some number nine wire wrap it around it wrap it tight and that will shore up that post and where it's got a charge running through it they generally don't try to rub up against it so you don't have that big of a problem with them breaking posts off Unless you get the rare coyotes that runs through here, then nothing's going to hold them in, which is good. So we're going to start with T-post, drive that in, do this one. There's another one down there that needs to be redone, and then we're going to go and check insulators and wires. I gotta find the end of this. I'm doing this I got certain wires that got insulators on them I do not want this wire there if 
viscous rub down. I do not want it touching that because it will short the whole fence out. So I'm gonna look for the insulators and make sure I don't wrap it by them. Easy. is a lot better so aside from about busting my butt on that deal it went pretty good pretty solid that's what you want but I'll go through the fence here and you can see insulators so we go down to the next wire here and that makes it so we don't short that fence out when that inevitably slips down. So, got another one over here. We'll mess with it and move on. And this is the other one I was telling you about. <clears throat> See how that was done? And they knocked that thing clean off of where it was supposed to be. So, let's pick it up, move it over, and we'll throw another wire on it. And we'll make it work. Okay. Move this over just a little bit. And we're gonna put all new wire on it. We're gonna put one up top and one down low. Nice and easy. That one right there it is never going to be straight. I think it was crooked when they nailed the fence to it. So just kind of dealing with it. Because there are some of these that will get shifted. Gets muddy out there. Fence shorts out. Gets wet. Cattle will scratch themselves on it and it will bend that in the mud. And then when they go to fix the fence, they just deal with what they got. So this one's never going to be completely straight, but I got set the top and the bottom so it should knock over like it did. Now we drive around and we check insulators. Insulators are those little ceramic deals that are on the post that the electric wire goes over. Check those, make sure the wires are off of those, otherwise it gets short out against the fence when everything gets wet. And then we also have to make sure we got no broken wires, no loose wires, uh, stuff like that. So let's go look. So I want to show you guys some kind of how this whole setup works because it was different. Uh, for me, when I come over here and dealt with this, I've dealt with barbed wire, I've dealt with a little bit of electric fence, but never anything quite like this. But it's a pretty simple deal. I'll flip you around and I'll show you. So start up here. There's your fencer. 
10 mile fencer. Comes right out of there, jumps on down to this wire right here. Comes from that, jumps across from this wire, down to the bottom wire. Runs those two wires all the way down to the end. We got a jumper across in the corner. Then it goes all the way around. But it also jumps across over here and then it runs across into pen seven here and all the way around here. So, very simple concept. Hopefully you guys could hear that because it is a little bit windy today. Thank goodness. But, real simple, real easy. I'm not too big of a fan. Uh, I, I don't like electric fence. But it serves its purpose here and it works good. Um, problem is this barbed wire, it gets rotted out really quickly. And this, since it's not ranch style fencing, they just kind of patch it together and make it go. It's not anywhere near as tight as what it'd be if I was in a pasture. And I don't like that. And a lot of this stuff is brittle. It's broke. It's got a lot of splices in it. But I've got a tester and I test it on the other end and it still tests really hot. It still hits hard. So it works. Um, but let's drive around and see what we see. Well, I got about halfway down here and I've seen... I got that post it's kind of kicked out at the bottom and that is actually the first one that I ever did and it's kind of an embarrassing story because I never fully understood how these electric fences worked and it just it didn't make any sense to me how he was telling me to do it because he said come in here we'll eliminate that post put t-post in and everything will be good so I tried to ring up insulators and everything else on that t-post and wired it in and it just it was a disaster and after he screamed at me about this that and the other he finally figured out that he didn't explain this very well and so we put this post back drove in t-post beside it put a wire around it and it is what it is it's worked but i don't like the way it looks so i'm gonna put a wire on the bottom of it to hold that bottom end in so it don't kick out and keep on moving okay guys you can see I got my wire on here. But the problem is going to be, if they move this around, this wire comes up and it touches this. This is a hot wire. It's going to short this fence out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a fencing staple over this new wire here. And now we'll keep it right where I want it to be. Just like that. Now that isn't going to go anywhere. Come down a little further, found another one. This one's a little different. This post had been put in, but the wire's not on it anymore. And it's not going to hit anything. It's hitting this regular wire right here, not the hot wire. But I still think I should probably throw a wire around it, so I'm going to do that quick. Not going to bother you guys with that. You've seen me do enough of them. Then we'll keep on moving. What are you doing, buddy? You say hi? Stopped over here to see this. See, the wire is loose, which a lot of these are. And you can see the splices I'm telling you guys about. The problem here is when you clean pins and you move stuff around, this manure gets piled up on here. They walk on it, stretches these wires out, and then it can short out. This manure gets wet, this fence will short out. And you see this right here? That's that jumper I'm telling you about. Jumps it across. And then it also goes up and over and then down and that's how that side of the fence is powered but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to take this and i am going oh oh i think i'm going to take it off over here at the end by the post 
I'll undo the fence, pull it off the insulator, put stretchers on it, stretch it back out, wrap it back through the insulator and tighten it back up. Maybe, we'll see how, how that all works. Okay, first thing, I gotta unwrap this fence. ahead and pull it out of this loop. Fence is free. Now, set that up there. I'm going to pull this as tight as I can. And I'm going to hook it into the fence, or the fence stretcher. Get it in there, take fencing pliers, pound on that hook there so I can really lock this in. There we go. Go ahead. this wire uh, back through the loop just like that and we'll wrap it around our wire again just wrap it around itself And after I eat that, I'm going to wrap it back over itself going back the other way. So that it'll stay hooked. Now I'm going to pull this up a little more. And I'm going to go ahead and release the stretchers. Release the wire. There she goes. And believe me, where I come from, cowboy country, ranch country, this style of fencing and doing it like that makes me sick. It's not great. That fence is not tight. It's still loose. It's not going to be sitting in the, man in the manure anymore. But a lot of this fence needs to be replaced. But that is the difference between doing it for this application and doing it for ranching. Ranching, you're leaving your cattle in the paddocks in the pastures whatever you want to say and that fence has to hold those cattle in and here they know where the food is they know where everything is supposed to be and they don't know what to do once they get out so the electrified fence really kind of keeps them in the barbed wire is just an extra deterrent but it works 
I don't know how it works, but it works. So, it is what it is. Well, you can see there, we're supposed to have a staple on that. There's a staple there, but the wire is not in the staple. And this right here is what we call a drain. These things have mounds in them and they're sloped so the water runs on both sides of the mound. It runs out here into this drain. And this happens to be right where this is. So we're going to go grab our staple. Go ahead and pull that out and I'm going to grab a new staple and we'll pound that back in. Well, that should be about it for this pen 7. And these cattle behind me are really nice cattle. Actually, knows the ones we've got. like these cattle, and I love the ones we shipped today. They didn't uh, grow as much as what we hoped, but they did all right. But like I say, these fencing this way, it just, it bugs me. Um, it works. It works, and that's what a lot of these guys here do. And it, why fix it if it ain't broke? But it's just me coming from ranch land to this. It's just odd for me seeing all these splices and seeing how loose all the wires are and seeing the spaces they have at the bottom of the wires and everything else. It's it's crazy for me. But it works and you got to adapt and do things the way that they want to do it and the way they have been doing it. Whether it's right, wrong or indifferent, I don't know. But I know when I do get the opportunity to put a new fence in, new wires in, then that stuff you can play a song on. It's nice and tight. But it is what it is. You deal with what you got. Uh, when it ain't your stuff, you deal with it how they want you to deal with it. And it is what it is. But anyway, guys, I think I am done here. I'm going to go plug the fencer back in, close the gate up at the top, and... Get ready to move those guys in tomorrow. So, hope you guys enjoyed being along for the ride. Hopefully you found it just a little bit informative or at least a little bit entertaining. I love making these videos and I hope you guys really enjoy watching them. So, as always, I thank you guys for watching.